welcome to this new unit, grade four, whole numbers. We're going to look at numbers and how we can look at them differently and just kind of make meaning out of them. And uh, just to get us started, just to warm up our brains here, just the largest marching band ever assembled had 4,526 members. It's quite a large band. And there were students from 52 different school bands. Well, to continue our story, this largest marching band, they had 1,342 majorettes. And that's uh, the people that kind of conduct or, you know, have those bars. Maybe you've seen them on TV or in a parades. They had flag bearers, as you can see in this picture. And they had a drill team, and usually those are the drummers and such. The rest of the band were musicians. But we're going to talk about this number, 1,342, in a few different ways here. Firstly, we can represent this number using base 10 blocks. And so I have some pictures of base 10 blocks, and I'm just going to drag them out here. So I have, uh, well, the 1,342, so there has to be 1,000. So this picture represents 1,000. So you, if you do happen to have base 10 blocks, you could grab, you know, some. And this, this big one here, that represents 1,000. Uh, next, we're dealing with 300, and each one of these flat pieces as we call them, sometimes we call them flats, is worth a hundred. If you count them, you can go ahead and pause it and count them. There's a hundred in each one of those. So there's three of those in the hundreds. So we need three of those. And then we need four of these rods. And each one of these rods represents 10. So we have that coming out. And then we have two ones. And so we can use base 10 blocks to show the number 1,342. Well, sometimes we're asked to draw this, and I mean, I don't know if you know about you, but I don't really want to be uh, drawing, you know, 1,000 little blocks here. So we can use those ideas of base 10 blocks. So maybe, well, I can I can draw a square, maybe kind of extend it out a bit, and just kind of connect all of that. And I could make, you know, I could say that's that represents 1,000. And uh, I, I had 300, so each one of these, these flat squares here we could say is um, 100 each, so that's 300. I can just do this for the rods, that's, that's simple enough. I know that means they're tens, and then maybe for two, or for the two there, the ones, I could just draw some dots. And so here's a picture that's helping me represent 1,342. We could also use something called a place value chart. And so we, here we we know where the numbers go because we have a ones column, a tens column, a hundreds column, and a thousands column. And if I just put this in there just as it's written, I know that there is 1,000 in this number, there's three hundreds in this number, there's four tens in this number, and there's two ones in this number. And each one of these represents something. So. So this one actually represents this, and this three actually represents that, and that four actually represents this, and that two just is just the same as this two. So even though this is a three, it doesn't actually mean three. It actually means that three is in the hundreds place, so that is actually saying that is 300. Well, building upon that, maybe, um, maybe we could use something called expanded form. We could write this out as a sum. Now, if you don't remember what sum is, sum is uh, S-U-M, I mean, is when the answer when we had add numbers together. So if I was to add 1,000 to 300 to a 40 to a two, I would get this digit or that number there. And we call you know, the way we're writing up this, expanded form. And I, we're going to use that language a little bit in this unit. So if you're ever asked to do something in expanded form, the teacher or me um, is actually asking you to write it out um, this way here. We can also use words. Like, I don't know if you know this, but um, every numeral can be written out in with letters. And so the number 1,342 can be written literally. So we have you know, 1,342. Uh, it's very important that you maybe notice that there is a hyphen uh, with numbers like that. And so if you have a spelling quiz coming up and you have numbers in there, you might want to add that hyphen because that is actually proper. It, it signals that, that those two numbers are kind of connected there. 
And we could also use something called standard form, and basically standard form is this. We just write it the way we always write it, and we're using numerals, so that is that is standard form. So, just to make sure, there is no spaces between any of those digits. However, um, when we get into numbers like 10,000, we, uh, we write this in a standard form, but I don't know if you notice, there is a space between the thousands and the hundreds digit. We don't do it for when we write it like 1,000. We don't put that space in, but when we get to a number like 10,000, we would put a little space. Now, if you're from the United States, um, you usually do put a comma in there, but uh, us in Canada and the rest of the world, actually, we do put a space in there. Now, a note that we should probably mention is that we're, when we speak this number, we're not going to be using the word and in there. We don't say one and um, 342. We just read that 1,000. Um, oh, sorry, that's a mistake. That should be 300. All right, I'm going to get you to do a little bit of work here. So in 2001, the population of Oliver, British Columbia was 4,824. I'm hoping you can show me that number in the ways that I just showed you in two other ways. So I'm going to get you to pause the video and I'm going to get you to get a pen and, or pencil and paper out. Try a few ways that you could represent that number. And then when you're ready to check your work, you can press play again. Okay, well the first way I talked about was using base 10 blocks, so I have some down here, so I could show you four of these for 4,000, I could bring out eight of these for the 800, four, I take a lot of space, and I have eight of those, and then I had two tens, so I'll bring those out, and then I have four ones, so if I happen to have base 10 blocks on hand, I could show my work that way. Uh, I also showed you, you could draw it out. So again, I have four of these thousands. Um, well, that's a quick way. And I have eight of these hundreds. I have two tens and, um, oops, four ones. Now I also showed you a place value, so um, if I had a place value chart, I could fill that in. I also showed you expanded form, so we would write that as 4,000 plus 800 plus 20 plus 4. We talked about using words, so 4,000, we're not going to use the word and here, 8, Hundred. Uh, I almost said and there, but that's, I'm glad I stopped myself. Twenty. And be prepared to put that hyphen in there. Twenty-four. And we don't really need to put in standard form because I already gave it to you in standard form. So there's a number of ways that we can write the the number four thousand eight hundred twenty-four. Okay, I have another one for you. What is the value of each digit in the number 7,819? Did I see and there? 7,819. And um, I just would like you to pause here again. I would like to know, what does that seven mean? What does that eight mean? What does that one digit mean? What does that nine digit mean? So take up, you know, pause the video here, uh, press play when you're ready to, to move on, check your answers. All right, so that seven actually represents 7,000 and that 8 actually represents 800 and that 1 actually represents 10 and that 9 actually represents 9. So there you have it. You know, we, we do encounter numbers every day. I'm not sure if you actually have acknowledged that or you're aware of that. And so I quite often like to say a little slogan. I always end all my videos this way. In life, math happens. So take care and I'll look forward to, to meeting you in the next video.